scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The Bible clearly tells us a few very important things about this God that we serve, the God of heaven, the God of the universe. And I want to start by just making reference to two or three attributes about God as we begin to build our case um, around this teaching. Number one, the Bible reveals that God Almighty is the creator, the owner, and the ruler of everything. Please write it down. The Bible reveals that God Almighty is the creator the owner and the ruler of everything not just the heavens and the earth he is the creator the owner and the ruler of everything genesis 1 verse 1 genesis 1 verse 1 it says in the beginning god created who created in the beginning not from the beginning in the beginning god created so we see that god is creator psalm 121 from verse 1 and 2 psalm 121 from verse 1 and 2 i will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help it's a question verse 2 it says my help cometh from the lord which made heaven and earth so we know that heaven and earth was made and it was the Lord God, the creator that made heaven and earth. First Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 11. We're looking at a few scriptures to establish a few important attributes of God. It says, thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is mine. Thine is the kingdom, or is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. It says, all that is in the heaven and in the earth, it belongs to you. Are we learning now? So God is the absolute creator, owner, and ruler of all things. Revelation chapter 4, from verse 10 and 11. Revelations 4. 10 and 11 the four and 20 elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying 11 now thou art worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power he says for thou hast created how many things for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created that means the creation is still happening the ones that were created and the ones that have still been created is for your pleasure so fact number one that god almighty is creator owner and ruler of everything i know there are all kinds of debates and contentions as to the earth and all kinds of teachings across the globe but the Bible says it for a fact that when it has to do with creation and ownership, there are not many people who own the earth or the heavens. God Almighty 
is the creator the owner and the ruler of everything number two fact number two that we need to come to terms with as we discuss this series is that god is the exclusive owner of all power please write it down god is the exclusive owner of all power god is the exclusive owner he owns all power second chronicles chapter 20 we'll read three to six second chronicles chapter 20 please and jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the lord and proclaim a fast throughout all judah verse 4 and judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the lord even out of all the cities of judah they came to seek the lord verse 5 and jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of judah and jerusalem in the house of the lord and before the new court verse 6 and said o lord god of our fathers art thou not god in heaven it says thou and rulest not thou over the kingdoms of the heathen he says and in thine hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand you god is the exclusive owner of all power psalm 62 and verse 11 psalm 62 and verse 11 god had spoken once twice have i heard this that power belongeth to god somebody say power belongs to god let the devil hear it remind him one more time power belongs to god now listen very carefully these are very important foundations so i've said two things that god almighty is the creator owner and ruler of everything that includes the earth that includes the heavens hallelujah and i hope you know that in ancient times the word heaven was used to communicate the non-material dimension of god's creation it is not just limited to the atmosphere above man because heaven is not up heaven is a spiritual location are we together now so the word heavens was used to capture holistically all the dimensions that are invisible to the seeing of man so when you say heaven you don't mean the clouds you mean that realm and dimension that is real and exists but is not visible to the optical eyes colossians 1 and verse 16 colossians 1 16 let me just buttress on that point it says for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth visible and invisible you see it now so he created invisible things invisible does not mean unreal the concept of being invisible simply means the optical eyes unassisted cannot see it but it does not mean it is not there are we together very very important now please let's go to genesis chapter one genesis is called theologically the book of beginnings genesis chapter one we'll begin our reading from verse 26 for sake of time this is the first time we would see the expression let us until that time everything that had to do with creation was and god said and god said but now we get to verse 26 the bible says and god said let us make man in our own image i hope you know please look up i hope you know man was not the first of god's creation there were other things that were created before the arrival of man in fact according to scripture the first element that we see revealed was water is that true genesis chapter 1 verse 1 it says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth then he says verse 2 now and the earth that's the first time we see what was on earth that's what i'm trying to say that the earth was void 
and formless and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of god hovered round the face of the waters so we see water then verse 3 we see light and from the earth in partnership with water and light several things started coming up are we together i just wanted you to know that now back to verse 26 and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness i've taught you here that the image of god is a spiritual quality the glory of god the essence of god and then the likeness of god means to function like him two hands two legs are we together yeah and then he says let them have dominion let them have dominion the word man there is the hebrew word adam adam is not the name of an individual necessarily adam simply means dark earth one who came from this territory please keep that scripture it says let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth now when you see the bible says fish of the sea fowl of the air he's not limiting it to that very creature fish and fowl are we together the essence of that communication if you study from the hebrew rendition is god said let them have dominion over the sea that means the realm and the kingdom of the waters let them have dominion over the air are we together those creatures were just picked as the creatures that represent those that habitat are we together the fish of the sea the fowl of the air over the cattle and over all the earth over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth we're reading to 28 verse 27 now the bible says so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them 28 and god blessed them and said be fruitful multiply replenish the earth and subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air and every living thing that moveth upon the earth hallelujah let them have dominion was a handover service a handover ceremony I began my teaching by describing these attributes of God that both the heavens and the earth and everything created was created by God and for him the exclusive owner but here we see God making a statement when he brought man to the earth this dimension of his kingdom he made a very interesting statement he said let them have dominion that means I transfer certain privileges and responsibility unto them this is very important dominion is a very important word most believers do not understand the concept of dominion dominion please write it down i'm not necessarily um, giving us all the hebrew rendition and all of that but just write for your understanding the word dominion means the right to govern please write the word dominion means number one the right to govern it means sovereign control it means authority the word dominion means the right to govern sovereign control it means authority now we go back to genesis 1 26 let them have the right to govern let them have sovereign control let them have authority are we together this is very very important now um let me just digress a bit and explain for you the difference between power and authority until you understand the dynamics of power and authority you can never truly understand 
dominion we'll deal with it when we are looking at part two in details but now at least just to get all of us um at the same page what does it mean to have power power means the capacity to influence or change please write the capacity to influence or change power also means the force that compels compliance power means number one the capacity to influence or change so when you say i have power it means i have the capacity to influence or to change it also means i have the force that compels compliance notice please look up god never told man at the beginning let them have power he said let them have dominion meaning authority what is authority please write what is authority the word authority means number one the right to represent authority means the right to represent authority means the legitimate ground to allow power to function the legitimate ground to allow power to function the legitimate ground to allow power to function that means you can have power but if you do not have authority even though you have the force that creates compliance but your activity can be illegal i'll give you an instance what is the difference between the armed robber's gunshot and a military man's gunshot both of them have power is that true they have power invested in a gun but why do you clap for one when he shoots and you arrest the other when he shoots because one has more than power he has authority are you are you getting me now he has authority vested to him by the government the law of the land while the other one has power but does not have authority number two the military man has jurisdiction whereas the armed robber does not have jurisdiction authority like you will be learning cannot be authority unless and until there is jurisdiction you cannot be ruler without a predefined jurisdiction you need to understand these terminologies because it is important for us to know the frame of our dominion we were not given dominion everywhere god listed very specifically the jurisdiction of our authority is someone learning now so power just talks of that force that compels compliance but authority is the legitimate ground to use power if you have power and you do not have authority then you are operating it in an unauthorized way this is very important now authority is what makes administering power legal or legitimate you need to know this about authority it is authority that makes administering power legal or legitimate power without authority does not have boundaries power without authority cannot be efficient authority is what tames the use of power hallelujah now a few more things about power and authority that god gave man write this down god gave man authority without conditions but he will never give man power without conditions write it down please man did not need to do or be anything to be given authority by god when even before man realized himself that verdict came let them have sovereign authority 
but when it has to do with accessing power there are conditions God gave man authority without conditions but when it has to do with accessing power there are conditions isn't it amazing if you have authority and you do not have power you cannot be effective is that true because it will take power to make what you have said or your representation efficient so God gave man authority you are now my legitimate caretaker upon the earth pay attention you're going to learn the Bible says in Psalm 115 verse 16 please give it to us Psalm 115 verse 16 the heaven even the heaven of heavens are the Lord's is that in your Bible it says but the earth hath he given to the children of men now watch this do you see here immediately that the dominion of the earth was given to men I'm soon going to describe to you what condition you must satisfy to be called a man you know in our world when we say you are a man it means you are weak I'm going to teach you that when they say you are a man it's a special honor given to you there are many spirit entities that cannot be men hmm. are we together the earth has he given to the children of men in Luke chapter 10 and verse 19 Luke chapter 10 and verse 19 he said behold I give you power it's an inaccurate rendition sadly by King James give us amplified and you will see it corrected there in amplified he said behold I have given you authority and then power to trample upon serpents scorpions physical and mental strength and ability over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall in any way harm you hallelujah so man as the zenith of God's creation was given a gift and a blessing by God that gift is dominion and authority the ability to stand instead of the maker and manage this dominion this this realm of his kingdom very very powerful and very important so what makes you a man just to state it so that we know those who are talking for you to be a man there are two things that you must have listen carefully for you to be a man there are two things you must have number one you must first be a spirit if you are not a spirit you cannot be a man you must first be a spirit number two the place of residence of that spirit must be a material or a physical body you must be a spirit and that spirit must be domiciled trapped in a material body are we together and then in addition that spirit in that body must have what we call the mind the interface between the spirit and the body the mind containing the will emotions intellect all those solical faculties you are not a man if you are a spirit alone you are not a man if you are a body alone you are not a man if you are a mind alone there has to be that coexistence of a spirit living in a body and then having the faculties that connect that entity to this dual realm of the spirit and the physical realm you have to see that the design of man was a very intricate design no other entity had that kind of design that a spirit is trapped in a physical material body 
and then having a mind containing the will emotions and intellect i hope you know that all other physical creatures on earth have bodies but it does not qualify them to be called men you never call a goat a man are we together as much as science talks about chimpanzees and monkeys and evolution you never call a monkey a man what then is the difference that coexistence the spirit living in a mortal or material body connected by these solical faculties of the mind that's what qualifies any entity to be called man are we clear on that that means to know who is legal and who is illegal upon the earth listen very carefully the bible never restricted other entities from roaming about around the earth provided they are willing to submit to man there is no record in the bible where other non-human entities were prohibited from the earth they were allowed but the condition is that they must submit to the authority of man are we building now i'm taking it easy because we need to understand this to know the implication of that statement that means any other spirit that is not trapped in a human body that tries to exercise dominion and does not satisfy the condition to be called man is doing it illegally did you get that now any spirit at all for the dominion and the exertion of authority from any spirit entity to be legal on earth it must be trapped in a physical body and it must have a mind that interfaces between the spirit and the body this is very powerful let them have dominion means the following please write let them have dominion means the following number one that man from the time god made that statement is the legal steward and the ruler in the earth let them have dominion means the following this is the implication of that prophetic statement number one that from the time God made that declaration, man became and still is the legitimate steward and the ruler in the earth. Psalm 8 from verse 2 to 8. Man is the legitimate steward and the ruler as far as the earth is concerned. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies, thou that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger we're reading to verse 8 very quickly please it says when i consider the heavens the works of thy fingers the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained what is man that thou art mindful of him not the son of man that thou visitest him verse 5 it says for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels the word there is elohim a little lower than god and you have crowned him with glory and honor verse 6 thou made him to have what read with me please dominion over the works of thy hands what are the works of his hands everything that was created by him and for him are we together so god made man to have dominion over all the works of his hands thou hast put all things under his feet verse 7 okay let's go to hebrews chapter 2 hebrews chapter 2 now there is an addition there's something that paul added that i want to introduce from verse 5 hebrews 2 from verse 5 for unto the angels had he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak verse 6 it says but in a certain place he's making reference to psalm 8 now testify it saying what is man that thou art mindful of him nor the son of man that thou visitest him next verse thou hast made him a little lower than the angels 
aha it says thou hast crowned him with glory and honor and did set him over the works of thy hands follow carefully now verse 8 it says thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet for in that for in that he put all things in subjection under him he left nothing that was not under him he left nothing that means god did not omit anything that you would say ah i forgot and i made a statement he did it intentionally and the bible says he did not leave anything as far as the jurisdiction of dominion is given he did a thorough job by instructing everything to be under the feet of man the tragedy but now as it is in experience we do not yet see all things under him do you know what that means that means there are disobedient entities that are refusing to obey this instruction is someone learning now he's saying based on what we see in experience there are some entities that have refused in spite of this verdict there are entities that have refused that we will not come under the feet of this man remember if you are not a man and you are on earth the only way you can be allowed to function is that you must acknowledge the authority of the one God gave dominion to and there are spirits who are saying we will be here and yet we will not acknowledge that man and Paul was saying there is something wrong here there is somebody who is disobeying this divine verdict hallelujah so let them have dominion means number one that from the time God made that declaration man is the legal steward and the ruler in the earth number two let them have dominion means nothing legal please write it carefully nothing legal can and should happen in the earth without man's cooperation and participation let them have dominion means number two nothing legal can and should happen in the earth without man's cooperation and participation this is powerful nothing in the earth can happen and should happen without man's cooperation and participation now i want to make a very interesting statement please i want you to look up please look up please look up um i'm about to correct something and that's why i'm asking you to look up i have studied the subject of dominion and i have learned from fathers of faith and veterans of the gospel and i think there is there is a statement that has been captured it has been used for many years by wonderful and well-meaning men and women of god and I can tell you by the authority of scripture that that statement needs to be lovingly adjusted and corrected because it can be misleading. That is the word permission. You notice I did not use that expression. There have been many thoughts by well-intentioned men and women of God in discussing the subject of dominion. You would hear statements like, even man has to permit God to come to the earth. It is a very sincere statement but it is not scriptural now listen very carefully God well for the sake of our discussion here I would say God has authority but by the definition of authority God has absolute power God cannot have authority because authority demands that someone higher than you must give it to you are you getting this listen 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 don't just clap just understand what I'm teaching you so it, even if you say God has authority he's safe because he can he, that means he gave it to himself like he sought for one greater than him and not finding any he swore by his name you cannot say God has authority classically speaking because authority will demand that someone higher than you will give you access and define the geography of your of your function and supervise you so if you really say God has authority classically speaking it is not a very accurate statement because it then means there is someone somewhere higher than him 
who gave him a predefined region are we together every time you hear the word authority you must see jurisdiction connected to it authority over the earth authority over the earth when they make you in the secular say they make you an executive director you are not an executive director everywhere there is an office and there is a job description is that is that true you cannot get up and enter any office and say i am an executive director authority comes with jurisdiction so when people say back to what i was trying to correct um when you say god or the holy spirit or any other spirit that is not man is an illegal occupant in the earth um it is not a very it's a sincere statement but it's not scripturally and doctrinally correct because there is nowhere in scripture where other non-human inhabitants were prohibited from being around the earth their their prohibition was that they cannot act outside of their submission or their not the word submission exactly the participation with man are we together now so to teach that even man has to give god permission we've all made that mistake and there is nothing to be embarrassed about it but it is not an accurate it's not an accurate communication now i say this with profound respect and honor to all who have taught on the subject of dominion because you know every time it has to do with making adjustments and correcting sometimes when we find truth we can communicate it with such arrogance to mean look at the nonsense that all these people are saying uh -uh. i have taught you if your truth is not communicated in love what you are saying whether you are right or wrong you are wrong hallelujah let me let me just let me just digress and teach you every time you are correcting listen let me tell you this there is no man of god beginning from myself that you will gather his one year message and not find something there that needs deleting adjustment correction or better presentation no man in the world nobody there is no single individual who communicates truth that you carry his one year teaching that you will not find something there that needs complete deleting or adjustment or correction or a better presentation so it is not news if you find out that you listen to a man of god maybe a father of faith or someone and you see something that needs adjustment it should not shock you are we together every time you listen to the message of any man of god think two things man and god think two things man you are not hearing god alone uh -uh. in as much as you want to admit it's only god speaking you are hearing two people you are hearing god but the thoughts are being communicated in an earthen vessel so you will expect the imperfections of the earthen vessel listen 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 very carefully i just needed to digress to say this so that it will help us every time you discover that the thoughts of a man of god are either doctrinally wrong or wrong in presentation the first thing to look at is the purity of the heart of the communicator if and when you discover that it is a it is it is an intentional camouflage to deceive then that becomes a problem but where you find out that is just a limitation in knowledge or limitation in communication you must sustain the intelligence to be able to wave it away and thank god for showing you and then you continue getting blessed from other aspects everything cannot be wrong are we together now so you can listen to anybody you choose to listen to and you can decipher whether the error or the imperfections or the inaccurate presentations it should still not if you do not understand the message because of that error you yourself are not growing are you learning now i said this because of this very statement i have said 
I have taught you here that while we have the privilege to in love and by the reason of greater revelation, we can look from hindsight and be able to make adjustments over some of the things that our fathers have brought. We too, our own children we are raising, as impressed as we are with all these are revelations, our own children too would check and say, ah, Joshua Selman said this great man, but I think he may not have, by now, they would have seen a greater light. Therefore, in approaching anything that has to do with adjustments and correction, there must be love and honor. These two things must never be traded, even when you see the truth. Are we learning now? This is very, very important. But I can tell you this, God does not need permission from man to come to the earth. It is still his domain. Under a condition he can create out of his sovereignty, he can still invade the earth. That is true. What God needs, and that is not because he's limited, is because he chose it as his, pre his predeterminate counsel, is man's cooperation and man's participation. We are talking of partnership not authorization no man does not have what it takes to authorize god he has what it takes to partner with god as given by the spirit are you getting the point now so every time you listen to a man of god or you listen to a teaching that talks about permission just forbear and continue but now you know what the bible says let me show you one scripture 135 psalm psalm 135 and verse 6 He says, whatsoever the Lord pleased, that did he in heaven and where? And in the seas and in the deep places. Show me any restriction you see there. The Bible says, whatever the Lord pleased, he did. Whether in heaven or earth, the seas and the deep places. Even man does not know where the deep places are. This is a realm beyond our reach. And the Bible says God has exclusive authority. He can choose as an act of his sovereignty to veto anything. Nobody advised him on how to start creation. He did it as an act of his predeterminate counsel. That's how powerful he is. Are we together? But it is true that nothing legal can and should happen in the earth without man's cooperation and participation that is the implication of that statement let them have dominion let them have dominion means that god himself as an act of his will said anytime i want to do something in the earth i will need a man to walk with me not allow me walk with me hallelujah let them have dominion means number three that by reason of that statement man became the most valuable asset in the earth underline or start this statement let them have dominion means that by reason of that divine decree man became the most valuable asset in the earth needed by both god and satan hmm man not gold is the most valuable asset on earth man not oil is the most valuable asset on earth man not uh, what they call them now platinum and all of these things as much as we price them according to god's divine statement the most expensive asset in the earth today is man every other thing finds its relevance because of the presence of man Kill all the men on earth and open the banks. Kill all the men on, in the earth and carry the whole of NMPC. Only you, if you are the only one alive, it will not profit you. Every other thing finds its profit from the presence of man. Man became the most valuable asset in the earth, needed by both God and man. Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8, very powerful statement. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Is that in your Bible? Who is speaking? The God of heaven. Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then Isaiah the man said, Here am I, send me. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30. Ezekiel 22 and verse 30. 
and I sought for a man who is seeking for a man God himself I sought for a man among them that he should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it but I found none Luke chapter 22 and verse 3 Luke chapter 22 and verse 3 Satan is also looking for men the Bible says then entered Satan into who it didn't say then entered Satan into the basket it was demons that entered the swine Satan was not looking for swine Satan was looking for a man when he entered into Judas surnamed Iscariot he found relevance because at that point he could now use the authority of man I will show you where listen I've heard people say Satan is not powerful no there is no mention of God withdrawing the power Satan had but he could not function on earth even though he was powerful what Satan cries for in man is not power what Satan cries for in man is authority Jesus himself said I give you authority over all the powers of the enemy he acknowledged the fact that there is power Are you learning now let them have dominion means that man is the most valuable asset can you see why messless killings and all this wickedness is an insult It's more than just dehumanization this is the greatest asset that man put on earth man no matter what is in the earth if man is not there the earth cannot rise to its fullness and the prophetic potential that God invested in it gold does not mine itself oil does not mine itself It's man that does that when you talk about the economy is man sociology man psychology man every discussion is about and around man write this down number four what is the implication of that statement let them have dominion is God helping us tonight the implication of that statement let them have dominion all of creation can praise the Lord and should praise the Lord but only man can partner with him to allow his purposes to be done in the earth write this down please all of creation can praise the Lord and should praise the Lord but only man you see that only man can allow his purposes and his will to be done in the earth through his partnership this is very powerful allowing the will of God means walking in partnership with him to see to it that his purposes are established this is very powerful Psalm, 50, Psalm 150 verse 6 all of creation can praise the Lord and should praise the Lord but only man can allow the will of God through partnership to be done in the earth 150 verse 6 it says let everything that has breath praise the Lord praise ye the Lord Psalm 69 verse 34 Psalm 69 verse 34 it says let the heaven and earth praise him the seas and everything that moveth therein so the heavens can praise him the earth can praise him the seas can praise him but when it has to do with his will being done the only entity that can work in partnership with him actively legally is man are we together if you will not praise me I will raise up stones he's talking of praising him praising him if you refuse to praise me I will use something else but for 400 years the nation of Israel remained with prophecy hovering around them because one man was not yet prepared 
and walked upon by God. In fact, let me show you that scripture. Exodus chapter 3. We'll begin our reading from verse 4. I love the Bible. When the Lord saw that he turned aside, the he being Moses, God called him out of the midst of the bush and said unto Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Who is God calling? Don't forget the God who is calling now. The one who owns everything. The all-powerful. Yet he's calling a man. Verse 5. And he said, draw nigh hither. Put off your shoes from off your feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Verse 6. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father and the God of, thy, of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. And Moses hid his face and he was afraid to look upon God. Verse 7. Watch this. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. Read verse 8 loud and clear if you are a Christian. Ready? One to read. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the egyptians stop there please who has come down whoa and i am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into a good land we are about to learn scripturally how god comes down are you ready to learn how god comes down verse 9 now therefore behold the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Here's how God comes down, verse 10. Come now therefore, and I will send. God comes down by sending men. God comes down by sending men. I have come down moses come down therefore and i will send you to pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my people and the children of israel out of egypt the heaven of heavens is the lord's but the earth has he given man did not get it by conquest god gave but since he gave he now bound himself with that partnership are we together it is not impossible for God to walk without man, but he has chosen that as far as the economy of earth is concerned, man must be part of that equation that makes anything happen. This is very powerful. I am come down. I am come down. Dominion on the earth is only for spirits with physical bodies. Dominion on the earth is only for spirits with physical bodies any spirit that does not have a physical body can be around the earth but cannot function effectively and cannot exert dominion until it is invested in a physical body this is very powerful listen please look up this foundation i just gave you ladies and gentlemen it is the principal scriptural foundation for God working with men and men doing kingdom exploits. This is the foundation of occultism. This is the foundation of witchcraft. This is the foundation of anything spiritual. That means when Satan was cast from heaven, watch this. Do you know the judgment of Satan was not just his living heaven? Because we are not in heaven as that location, and yet we are not judged. So the judgment was not just in driving him from heaven alone. The judgment was in the fact that he was taken to a domain and not given the body that allows for authority. Are you getting it now? You have to understand the scope of the judgment of Satan. It was not just his leaving the earth. But that Satan alongside every other spirit that left the earth they were driven and when they came around the domain of the earth they were not given bodies unfortunately god in his intelligence designed it such that there is no other way of manufacturing a human body spiritually 
there are no fake bodies there are bodies or not I'm not talking of toys that they keep for children to play with I'm talking of a real body God himself designed it look at how he look at how he designed when he made man and made the first body he designed a strict system in man and said let that be the only strategy for bodies to make for continuity do you think if Satan had a way of reproducing bodies without you he would not even disturb you you would just see a wicked agenda continuing so Satan's helplessly you drive him and he still comes back is because there is no alternative there is no other way can I tell you why is Satan looking for me he will stop looking for you the day you leave your body so when you leave your body he focuses on those who still have their spirits in their bodies are you getting a point now Satan does not care whether it is a baby body adult body female body you are the only one arguing it he would do anything this is very powerful when when Moses died is it in your Bible that Archangel Michael came to carry the body Satan was also fighting because here was an empty body with no spirit inside and he wanted oh my god do you know how many legions would have entered that body you would have seen a resurrected Moses who would cause havoc bodies are powerful this body we play with is very powerful believers are trained to honor their spirits and leave their bodies not knowing that what gives your spirit authorization is the body whenever we talk about bodies we hate it we make it look like this is the reason this satanic demonic thing you keep insulting your body till the day there is a separation when that body is deteriorated to a point whether your spirit is prepared or not once it can no longer host your spirit it will leave and unfortunately there has not been any record in scripture where he took another spirit listen carefully no record in scripture where he took the same spirit and put in another body i know that we teach the concept of reincarnation what happened between elijah and john the baptist was not reincarnation it was a transference of the spirit and the power one day i will explain it to you i know there are many cultures that teach all those things and science and even psychology has researched people who seem to have lived in other lives and come it's not for me to create this argument i've read it too but i can tell you remember the believers reference is scripture it is appointed unto man to die once and after that I rest my case this is what the Bible says so whoever you saw in your dream hold on by this revelation most of the people you see in your dreams are not the people you knew they are just demons trying to use imagery and destroy you you must cast them away is someone learning this is very powerful most believers do not understand the principles of dominion so for dominion to truly happen you need God the giver of that authority you must be a spirit that body must be resident that spirit must be resident in a material body and there must be mind that mind to interface it when that happens you are the one God was talking about now please look up do you know that authority over earth was not given to man under the condition that if he is saved listen carefully when you are saved the authority you have structurally listen carefully over demons and every force that is antichrist that fights God 
but every human being who lives in a body enjoys this mandate of legitimately functioning on earth whether you are efficient or not is not the issue you have a body that allows you to function are you getting it now and that body is what satan is looking for preferably a body that is not joined to christ because you will understand what the life of god means the bible says that when you get saved the spirit of god comes is your body not the temple not just your spirit there is a joining with the spirit of god in fact ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 when you read the amplified it says finally brethren be strong in the lord amplified it says be empowered through your union with him be empowered through your union with him now please look up i hope you know that the spirits the non-human spirits that are on earth are greater than the population of humans on earth do you know that and do you agree with me the bible lets us know that in the judgment of lucifer one third of the angels fell now we were not given an exact amount but one thing we know based on the character of scripture and then you can see the experience of the man in Gadara, a legion of demons all in one man. Even when we come to Mount Zion, there are innumerable company of angels. There is no human gathering that cannot be counted on earth. But even the angels who are also spirit beings are innumerable, not to talk of demons. The angels that come to a meeting are innumerable and yet they are not up to one third of the angels that fell. What does this mean? This then means that the earth is immersed in several kinds of spirits and the principal assignment of most demonic spirits is the search for human bodies. They are not just there listen carefully they are not just searching for human bodies to possess alone they are searching for human bodies who can partner with them the devil does not need to possess a human body to use the human body the human body can as an act of your will say satan i want to partner with you the same way you can walk with the holy spirit the spirit and the bride says come so what then is witchcraft and what then is divination and all of this ancestry and all of these things satan through manipulation comes to men and now seeks fraternity with their will so let me work with you to complete that dominion equation and he can use it today every manifestation of authority and dominion you see satan exerting he got it from man that means satan will become powerless only when the last unbeliever on earth dies provided there is one unbeliever whose spirit is not yet joined to christ satan still has a window of opportunity are you seeing why he hates evangelism because for as long as you preach and people come to christ you are reuniting their spirits with the spirit of christ and now that makes it impossible for him to be joined to any human spirit and then second to evangelism he hates the teaching ministry because when you enlighten believers you bring them to a place of understanding he no longer can use their minds please listen very carefully when you call somebody a witch now classically speaking witchcraft has to do with deception i've taught you but there are human entities from scripture and from history who have chosen as an act of their volition when you meet somebody in a shrine and the person tells you i am a wizard or i am practicing occultism what exactly is the person doing i will tell you either by ignorance or by willfully submitting himself he has brought himself to donate that dominion mandate 
to now partner with the realm of the spirit and satan can use it to cause havoc and give him a momentary succor not knowing that the life of god already provided that however if you ever see dominion on earth it was not outside of the participation the influence and the cooperation of man this is very 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 powerful for as long as the word was in heaven as great as he was and he is not much could be done on earth he used men when it was time for jesus to come to the earth to die he didn't just come as the spirit of the living god called the word the bible says the word became flesh now the bible also shows us that i'm going to make a statement i hope you don't see this as a racist statement in the manufacture of human bodies it is possible for a man to be absent but a woman can never be absent it is possible for a spirit to play the role of planting the seed but as far as adding a material frame to that spirit is concerned it will have to be the womb of a woman that will do that job so the father of jesus it was the holy ghost that played that fatherly role even for jesus this also justifies the fact that there are humanoid species carrying bodies but are not pure humans there is what we call the generation of the serpent i have done a teaching on this There are human beings on earth. This is how far Satan went. I told you, you cannot manufacture a body outside of this. So, studying the whole biology of reproduction, Satan now saw that there is still a window of opportunity where a spirit can play the role of a man and a male. If you understand this, please don't be offended. But if you understand this, you will know where many diseases come from many diseases you see are a reaction by an unauthorized spirit now meeting with a material when a woman's stomach begins to protrude like pregnancy and you find out that something is growing in the similitude of pregnancy but it is not pregnancy and is hurting her and she would tell you i went to bed and a spirit came to sleep with me or do whatever and i got up from the realm of the spirit physically i'm seeing manifestations that are hurting me that is an aberration because for a proper child to come a proper child to come it has to be a pure spirit are we together a pure spirit a pure spirit means a spirit from God that has not been unadulterated as far as creation is concerned let me tell you this when you minister deliverance for people you will see that out of every ten about eight or seven are women it's not because they are bad there is an agenda that Satan has and unfortunately the church is very ignorant planting all kinds of things it's in your bible jesus said when men went to sleep an enemy came and planted a seed is that in your bible and they woke up and they began to see two kinds of plants growing one was not planned for the other one was the correct one and jesus said don't worry let them grow you will know the difference as they mature because if you want to kill all of them at this level you will not know who is who that plant you see he was talking about human beings he shall be like a tree planted so human beings are growing but there is another entity that has come to plant another kind of humans he said don't worry when they get to a state of maturity you will be able to distinguish and you will know i i wish i'm not the person who would teach you this but if you believe everybody on earth is a pure human think again think again what I'm telling you is not news to a traditionalist. It's not news to an occultist. It's only news to many, many Christians who do not press to learn. Let them have dominion. Let them have dominion 
over the sea over the air that is the reason why a native doctor can go and sit down and use water and tell you your name is this and everything he's saying is accurate I'll be teaching you by the next series the elements of the supernatural if the supernatural must ever find expression in this realm it cannot be outside of these elements light water the earth wind or sound any manifestation of the supernatural must be in partnership with these elements if you speak in the name of jesus arise this is the power of the air you are taking advantage of it if you bring revelation to people and it changes them that is the power of light are we together now this is very powerful now let me tell you this i submit to you i love the body of christ for most people who are veered off and gotten into occultism in search for power when they go to seek for power these are the same things they teach them the only thing is that because the spirit of god and the spirit of grace is not the one doing this you call a thing divination not because of its accuracy or inaccuracy the spirit that sponsors it matters so even if you are genuinely healed and it's not brought about by the spirit of god it does not bring god glory the holy spirit has to be the originator of that spiritual process and the sustainer of it to bring glory to god i can tell you you all know this go to your village and say i have headache it's not panadol they will give you sometimes they'll say come sit down on this grave stand up after five minutes and you will be surprised headache has gone they use divination to manipulate a correct mystery a correct mystery that can be accessed by light are we together it is true if you want to discuss the subject of dominion your heart must be opened and your heart must be inclined to scripture otherwise you will learn a lot of nonsense you will learn a lot of rubbish but at the same time if you do not learn the principles of dominion you cannot command power in this world many believers are weak because although we are godly we do not know how it says knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish the dominion thereof so what do i do when i go to bed and a spirit just appears and is disturbing me and is threatening me ah in jesus name no it will not happen to me nothing is going to happen under that condition of fear and ignorance there has to be exactitude you need to even understand what is happening why did the spirit come what is the spirit looking for and how can you end and close that door once and for all are we together how do i hold money finances and it just disappears from my hand doors of favor closes and then i go to a herbalist god forbid just an example and then you go to that herbalist and he says what do you want money i've suffered and he said all right i know what to do go and bring a chicken go and bring a goat he never said go and bring a business idea go and bring a chicken go and bring a goat he does not care he will not even ask you what are you doing just bring all these things they will slaughter it they will ask you to say a lot of things bring the picture of your child or whoever you love that you must kill and then you bring the person there and then when he does everything drink this do that and you say it's done and you will get up and go and sit down in your shop and human beings will start coming as if something is chaining them and they start buying everything and you're saying it's working then you go and introduce your friend through and it works what did he do to you he didn't bring new products to your shop he did something to the realm of the spirit and took advantage of that dominion of man and programmed a climate the same way too when a man of God stands in partnership with the Holy Spirit and I declare over you and I say in the name of Jesus you see that now understand what I am doing how do you say it will not work Let me tell you the truth if you're a man of God in these end times 
and you do not understand the mysteries of creation alongside dominion you may not live to finish your ministry i'm not a prophet of doom i am telling you that the end times will demand high level spiritual intelligence understanding the ordinances of the spirit especially if you stand pure to name the name of christ satan will use every every law of the spirit within his power to attack you and hopefully separate your spirit from your body so that you do not just get up and see a gentleman who is the breadwinner of a family just goes to school just when he wants to get a job and help the family he just, my head my head and he lies down and that's all and people say ah look at this please there are explanations to this mystery that when you have this understanding you can now say i have dominion and it's not just a cliche you go back and when you are praying you understand authority that there is something you can do to your climate and go to bed and let any spirit cross the circumference of that climate you have programmed laws and left them in the realm of the spirit hallelujah until cctv camera came from a layman standpoint we did not know there is a possibility to record events around your environment even while you are sleeping someone brought that technology now you have the privilege of going to lie down and even if something happens they can use the cctv system now they use drones and they use this they can literally watch a a very large landmass these things are borrowed technologies from the realm of the spirit read your bible you will never hear any mention of god or jesus getting up to walk around heaven to check who is rebelling he sits on that throne and yet nothing antichrist survives by what technology does he use god has never been threatened to stand up to say someone is fighting me and yet the evil from your heart he detects it and there was war in heaven it was michael that fought not god listen man of god if you do not understand this the devil will weaken your congregation weaken your ministry this end time ministry is a ministry of understanding and authority and power there are many people who do not know this wait until i teach you next week the mystery of altars listen don't miss koinonia next week i'm just giving you a background i want to open your eyes to understand the legitimate systems of authorization in the realm of the spirit nothing just happens everybody's just coming to my ministry my business my company no sir it does not just happen whether by divination or whether by spiritual understanding but unassisted you will remain weak i assure you on that when you learn this you can now take charge over your family over your business because you will be learning that territories are made up of altars they are made up of gates they are made up of doors you can be in abuja and yet you are not yet in abuja i've taught you this my dear people you know this more than that. apostle have been there for 20 years no if the city does not know you and the region does not know you you will now find out why god had to say hear ye him what is what was the meaning of that statement hear ye him who was he speaking to you will now know why you can stand in the presence of god and call forth a destiny helper because you are standing upon the earth and the earth is a universal point of contact because every human being must make contact with that earth you and the person who you need the help there is something that puts you in common you are all standing on earth one of those elements of the supernatural so you can listen listen we are going to pray but look at me how does someone stand in a coven and a shrine and call someone from america and says you are the one who will be the breadwinner but i command you to come back home and the person just gets up and says i feel like going back and he goes back home and then 10 years later if you say that person has ever gone to the city center they will not believe it 
and yet the person is there and the person who called him is still sitting on the ground quietly show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.